Hi everyone, I want to make a video about how I use my We Are Memory Keepers letterpress um, as a stamp positioning tool because it's sort of not the intended purpose, but it works so amazingly well. So this is what it looks like. It, this is like the basic kit. We Are Memory Keepers letterpress. It comes with the platform, the brayer, the platform, the little um, acrylic tile for you to roll your inks out on. I'll show you the back too. Uh, cleaning cloths, the paper, which is like a cotton paper, um, inks, these which are paper placement guides. They're adhesive foam, sort of like bumpers that you um, place on the platform to hold your card base in, um, in one specific location. And um, these are the printing plates which are similar enough to stamps that um, I thought I would give it a try and it works really well so I thought I'd share it with you guys. So again that's what um, the kit looks like and you can get it at a lot of different places. I'm in Canada we only have Michaels as far as a craft store goes. I don't know if they sell this at Michaels in Canada um, but um, I have seen it on a trip to the States. I have seen it at different stores down there. So you can try your Michaels, Joann's, Hobby Lobby. I actually bought this from scrapbook.com, which is a website that I've shopped at a couple times. Always had good luck with it. And um, so I ordered it from there. But I also took a look at it and it's on the A Cherry on Top website. So you can order it online too. Uh, the nice thing about that is with scrapbook.com and a cherry on top, you earn points with your purchases. So you can apply those to future, future purchases. And in my case, I won a gift certificate during the National Scrapbooking Day back in the spring. So I was able to get this uh, with my gift certificate. So um, yeah, that worked out really well. And I believe that these, you could probably use a coupon, like if you were out of Michael's, Joann's, Hobby Lobby, you might be able to use a coupon or pick it up when it goes on sale. So you could probably snap these up for um, a good price if you kind of keep your eye out for them. Okay, so this is the platform that comes in there. It is, um, you've got the base portion of it, then a thick acrylic cover, and it's all hinged at the side. Um, I do want to mention that this works well with clear stamps and red rubber stamps, the ones that have been on a wood block and then unmounted and attached to a cling foam. This hinge is nice because it's very tight tolerances from side to side, so this top platform doesn't wiggle, but it's got room to move up and down. And what that means is you get a really nice stamped image all the way across because you get even pressure. So if this hinge, if that post was um, fixed, locked, I'm not sure, um, in the position where it was at the bottom of the hinge, when you open this up, the stamp would sit in here and you would end up with more pressure towards the hinge end of the image and less pressure towards the open end and you would end up with an unevenly stamped image. Because this hinge has free motion moving up, it means that you can get an equal spacing between the top and the bottom plates so that the stamp that sits in between there gets even pressure all the way across. So um, yeah, if anyone was wor worrying or wondering if um, you get good images with it. You definitely do, and it's because of that hinge. So I'm not sure how much sense <laughs> that made. I don't know if I explained it well, but the short answer is you get a nice even pressure all the way across because that hinge does move up and down. So this top plate, it has a grid printed on it. It's silk screened on. It's silk screened on this top side. So when you open it up and you're gonna put your stamps on this side of the cover piece, if you get ink on here, you're going to be able to clean that off and not worry about damaging the silk screened grid. This grid and this piece of um, thick card 
is what is used for the letter press. So you don't need these if you're going to be using this as a stamp press. I will show you how I use this to cut some of the pieces that I've made to fit onto this base, but you don't actually use it in the, um, the process of stamping. So I'm just going to set these aside for now. So this base is really great because it's smooth. It doesn't have any holes or texture to it. It has a lip on all four sides, which means that you can place paper up against it so you've got, you know, a straight edge. And I'm going to start with the most, oh, that's what I want to show you. I know that um, the stamp press is um, something that card makers use a lot. And I don't make cards, but I did want to show you. So for an A2 card, which is a finish size of four and a quarter by five and a half, this is a piece of paper that I've cut to four and a quarter by 11. And you can see that it fits in there with room to spare. Um, so certainly if you were going to swap the orientation of your finished card, if you want to make it so that it the fold was on the long side, um, you'd have a piece of paper that was five and a half by four and a quarter, or sorry about that. You'd have a piece of paper that was eight and a half, so shorter than this, by five and a half, and that would fit there. So you can fit an open card base into this platform. So I'm going to start off by showing you the most basic, cheap, free way of um, using this as a stamp press. All you need are post-it notes. I'm using some post-it tape and I'm putting that under the corners of the piece of paper. This is just a piece of scrap paper that I'm going to stamp on. So you can put it anywhere on the base platform and then just tuck your post-it notes under there. I'm then going to use some washi tape, so low tack tape. You could use like a micro pore tape as well to adhere the paper to the base. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to use a really cute stamp from My Favorite Things. This is their I Need You stamp set and it's all cats um, and they're just really adorable. Cats, mice, some sentiments. So I'm going to take the stamp, I'm going to place it where I want it on that piece of paper close the cover, press down to pick up the stamp, open it back up, take my ink, this is shaking the table and the camera, sorry about that, ink up the stamp, close the cover, some pressure on top, and there you go, a nice crisp image. So if you're doing multiples, you probably want to know if you can duplicate that and I will show you how um, and that's why those post-it post note excuse me pieces were tucked under the corner so I'm gonna draw this really heavy so that shows up on the video um, in real life you would just do like light pencil marks little ticks but I'm gonna do it really dark so mark your corners on the post-it and you could do that before you stamped of course so I'm going to take this piece off to the side, pull up my washi tape. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to stamp on a piece of vellum that I've cut to that exact same size so that I can put the vellum over top of this first stamped image and we can see just how accurate it is, like how, how well it lines up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just hold this in place and make sure that all four corners of the vellum are in the four corners that I've drawn. It's a lot easier when you can kind of, um, you know, put your head over it and take a look. <laughs> I can't do that without blocking the camera, so it took me a little bit minute, but it's not tricky at all. Now I'm going to do the same thing. Ink up my stamp. I haven't moved it, I've just left it there. Close this, press down. And now I've got the image on a piece of vellum. So I'm going to pull this up. Now this ink is going to be wet on the vellum. So let's hope I don't smudge it. So I'm going to put the vellum over top of that piece of scrap paper. 
and I'm trying to do this without touching any ink. And I'm going to hold this up close to the camera so you can see that it's stamped right over um, the image underneath. So let me zoom in here. So there you go. So you can see that the image on the vellum is in, exact, in exactly the same place as the image underneath. So if you want to do multiple stampings or if you were, I don't know, let's say your first impression didn't end up clear or as dark as you wanted or you want to add something to it, you could definitely do it. And the post-it note, drawing the pencil lines and washi tape works just fine. And like I mentioned, it's practically free. Most of us have <laughs> post-it tote post-it tape or post-it notes and uh, washi laying around our craft room. So that is the most basic, easy, free, cheap way of doing it. So I'm going to show you another way of doing it. So I'm going to take this stamp off and what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how you can make um, a lip or an edge that is um, perpendicular to this long edge, the, um, the lip that's in this base. I'm not sure if I'm using those words correctly, but I think you know what I mean. So this is a piece of EK Success Sticky Ruler. I got this at Michael's. It sells in Michael's um, for about 10 to $15 here, and you can use your coupon. So it's not terribly expensive. It says it's a sticky ruler. Uh, what that is, is sort of a tackiness to it. So um, it's almost, it's got maybe the same strength as like a washi tape or a, or maybe the foam from a cling stamp. It's got a tackiness to it, but it's not going to leave any um, residue behind, any adhesive behind. Mark up your machine. You can see it sticks down and then you can peel it off. Um, now because it is tacky, sticky like that, it will pick up dust and in my case cat hair. <laughs> but what you can do is just take some water and wipe it off and that'll both clean it and if it gets um, less tacky than you want it to be, uh, cleaning it off with just some water will sort of rejuvenate it and make it tacky again. So this piece is a piece of a ruler that I cut down. I will show you more about this in the next um, in the next step, I guess. Um, but just because I can't sort of get my head right over top because of the camera, I'm going to use this just to um, put this ruler down. So there you go. So I've got it there. It's not going anywhere. I can move my finger over it. It's stuck enough that it's not going anywhere. It's not too thick. It's not going to get in the way of the cover closing. But it's thick enough that some thick cardstock, well, maybe not the thickest, but cardstock will butt up against it and not move anywhere. So this is a way to, if you wanted a corner so that you could tuck your paper into a corner, you can do it that way. So I'm going to use some red rubber stamps. These are wood mounted ones that I've just put onto some cling foam. So I'm going to place those there and I've picked ones that have very thin lines so that we can see if there's any distortion on the image. So same process, you close it, pick it up. If this moves, you can always just bottom edge, ruler edge. Then you're gonna ink up your stamps. And again, this is shaking the table, which is shaking the camera, so sorry about that. All right, and we're gonna close this up. And you probably can't see it from where the camera is, but as soon as I push this down, what happens is the stamps touch the paper, they touch the base of the um, platform, and as you press down on this side, the hinge lifts up on this side. So you, that's how you get that nice even um, spacing, the length of the platform, and that's going to make sure that you get even pressure and you're not going to get distortion that this side of the stamp is going to get smushed with more pressure and this side of the stamp is going to get very little pressure. So a little press and I'll hold this up to the camera and you'll be able to see that all along the stamp 
the end that's closest to the hinge and the end that's farthest away from the hinge. You've got even pressure all along the line and with the leaf stamp you can see the same thing between the stems and the leaves themselves. The pressure is exactly the same so you don't have any distortion of your image. So that is a really great thing. Okay, so now I'm going to show you the last and quite possibly my most favorite option. Uh, the Misty Stamping Press, which I have seen videos of, never seen in person, has a couple of features that I thought would be really, really cool. And so I went about seeing if I could replicate any of those uh, features for my own little makeshift stamp press. So this is what I came up with. And this is really simple and really inexpensive. Um, what this is, is a piece of thin magnetic adhesive paper. So this is the stuff that you can buy, um, I think Silhouette makes it, and then there's of course a bunch of other uh, brands. But this is that really thin magnet that's obviously flexible, and it's magnet on one side, well it's, magnet on, it's magnetic on both sides, but on one side you see your very typical magnet, and on the other side it's adhesive. There's that release paper that you pull off and then you can stick whatever you want onto it. So there's some of that. I got it at Michael's, but I've seen it at the dollar store, Staples, all sorts of places. Then I used a piece of grid paper. This is just some grid paper that I had laying around, but you could certainly either print some up if you wanted something with guidelines, find a printable on the internet if you wanted uh, certain markings, you could create your own. You could the options are endless whatever grid paper you want you could get and then on top of that what I've added is a layer of clear contact paper so almost like a shelf liner which you can get at Michaels you can also get it at places like Home Depot um, some of the grocery stores even around here have it in the sort of like tin foil wax foil wax foil that's not right wax paper <laughs> sections um, and all that means is that when I place this in here, if I get ink on this, I can wipe it off because I didn't want to have to make a new one of these every single time that um, I got ink on the graph paper. So that just means that I can wipe it off. Now, I did this really, really easily by cutting a piece of the magnetic adhesive paper bigger than I needed, putting a piece of graph paper on top of there putting a piece of contact paper on top of there. You don't need any glues or adhesive because the magnetic portion is self-adhesive. So that sticks to the graph paper and the contact paper is adhesive. So when you put that down, it sticks to the graph paper. And yeah, that's it, really that simple. So I cut all of those bigger than I needed. I placed this insert over top and I cut along each of the four sides. You can do that with, um, most paper trimmers will actually cut through this magnet. Um, you might need to replace your blade afterwards. It's not too, too bad on them, but um, yeah, not necessarily the best if you're trying to get really, really crisp paper cuts afterwards. Um, you could use scissors, an X-Acto knife, anything you want. But I just used an X-Acto knife, went around each of these edges, and then as you can see, the corners are curved. I used a quarter inch corner rounder and it sits right in there. Now this does add a little bit of thickness or height to the base, base but not so much. You still have that lip. So what I wanted to do was create an edge. Now you certainly could use this ruler. It'll stick to the contact paper and then you could lift it off and with the with the grid being right on there you can very easily you know, eyeball it. If you wanted something at an angle, you could use that. Or what you can do is you can get a grid ruler and cut it down to fit. So you want it to fit in here and that's roughly, I want to say just over five and three quarters of an inch um, top to bottom. Now I bought this one at Michael's. This was an artist loft grid ruler. I don't particularly like it. It's not too flexible. It's sort of one of the more brittle plastics. Like it's got that sort of hard, brittly feel to it. 
Um, what I would prefer is to use one of these. This is an EK Success centering ruler, and it's extremely flexible. Um, it's got a little bit of a very, very, very fine texture on the one side, but it's perfectly smooth on the other. And the reason I would go with this is because it's going to be easier to cut because you're not going to have to worry about it cracking um, when you cut it. And you're going to be able to cut it with scissors. Um, I just like these, this a lot better, personally, um, than this. With this, I used a straight edge and an X-Acto and just did a number of um, shallow cuts with the X-Acto to cut it, but the grid line in this is actually sandwiched between two pieces of plastic, and you can see where it started to delaminate, um, whereas this, this is silk screened on, I've gotten ink on this many times being able to wipe it off no damage is done so I would probably go with this I can't remember exactly this is probably in the 10 to 15 dollar range you can get it at Michael's probably every other craft store near you certainly online and you're gonna be able to find these go going on sale or be able to use a coupon for them this uh, it was a Michael's brand I found it in the sort of drafting section your fine arts and I think it was probably around ten dollars um, and again, nothing really wrong with it, just not my first choice. So I would probably go with something like this if you could find it. So anyways, I cut it so that it was a pretty snug fit. So I can move it along, but there's no wiggle room in there. And because this is magnetic, you can put magnets down. Now these are little magnets that I had laying around. They're not the strongest, they're not the rare earth ones. Um, but you can get little magnets like this at Michael's. Um, I would guess other craft stores, probably even Home Depot, Lowe's, that kind of thing. So I'm going to pick myself up a couple of um, stronger magnets, but these will work for now and I'll show you how that works. So we're going to put a piece of cardstock down. It'll sit against this bottom lip. It'll then sit against this straight edge. And I can put magnets there to hold it in place. I'm then going to take some clear stamps and lay those out just randomly on this. Uh, let's put that one upside down. So there we go. And then the same technique. Close the cover, press down to lift it up. Ink up your stamps, close it, press you to get your impression, and there you go. Really nice, crisp, and clear. So what I'm going to show you is I'm actually not going to clean these stamps off. I'm going to show you how you can use this, um, or how accurate, I guess, this is, if you're going to be doing um, stamping and you need to re-stamp the exact same image. So putting the piece of paper down. So without cleaning this off, I'm going to close this and it'll be like a second generation stamp. So it'll be faded and pale. So let's say I stamp something and I've missed part of it. It doesn't stamp cleanly. What I'm going to do is go back, re-ink my stamps, not moving anything, not moving the paper, not moving the stamps. Then close that again, press down, open up. And I'm going to show you this. You'll be able to see that it's stamped exactly over that first impression. So there you go. Nice and crisp. Um, no variation or no wiggle in the line weights. Um, so yeah, as far as the stamp positioner, this works really, really well. I like it because I can use it for a, as a stamp press or for letter press. So it means one tool with two different uses. For me, that means it's got great value because I'm paying, I believe this was around $70 um, at scrapbook.com, so $70 US. It went on, it did go on sale, so I actually got it for $55. 
So you're paying, let's say, 50 to $70 for this, but it does two different things really, really well. And I like that I only have one tool in my craft room because I don't do a lot of stamping. I don't do a lot of letterpress. So to have one tool that will do both well means that I've spent less money and um, I've got more free space in my room for new and exciting things. So, so thanks everyone for watching. Just a, a little video on how I use my letterpress as a stamp positioner. I hope some of that was useful to you. And if you have any questions or if you have any comments or if you have any ideas, leave them in the comments below and I will get back to you. And if you want me to um, try anything out with this, if you're curious how it will work in any situation uh, before you go ahead and buy it, leave it in the comments. And if I can help out, I'd be glad to. So thanks for watching. Bye.